Yeah, uh, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, and so, yeah, I'd like to talk to you today about uh, some theorems known as fundamental local equivalences that take place in the quantum geometric Langmans correspondence. Um, so a quick overview of what's going to be discussed. So um, a few years ago, Gates, Corey, and Lurie formulated some conjectural quantum deformations of the geometric Satake equivalents. And um, so under a mild restriction on the value of the deformation parameter, uh, we prove these conjectures, or more carefully, we prove these conjectures non-factorizably. And I'll explain what that means. And this was done in joint work with Justin Campbell and Sam Raskin. Um, and so after telling you a bit about the motivation for what the conjecture is, as well as uh, what we proved and what the methods we used were, uh, I'll sketch at the end some arithmetic and representation theoretic variants or applications, which are work in progress. So um, the motivation uh, should start with just geometric satake. So since we're doing everything geometrically, we're working over an algebraically closed field K of characteristic zero. So uh, given a smooth projective curve X over K and a reductive group G, you can consider the moduli stack of G bundles on X on G. Um, and uh, so this has sort of heck asymmetries coming from local modifications. So given a point of the curve, let's call the completed local ring at the point O in its fraction field K and co the corresponding arc and loop groups G of O and G of K that you met in uh, Sam's talk. Uh, so, uh, Modifying bundles at a point gives rise to an action of the spherical HECA category of bi GFO equivariant D modules on GFK on D modules in Bungie. And uh, so, th in some sense, one of the, the first appearances of Langland's duality in the study of D modules in Bungie is uh, the geometric Satake equivalence, which is due to Lustig, Drinfeld, Ginsberg, Mirkovich, and Bellonen. Uh, which says uh, that there's a monoidal equivalence at the level of abelian categories between the spherical Hecke category for G and representations of the Langlands dual group G check. Um, and so if you haven't seen this kind of thing before, and it's the end of the day, uh, let's just count parameters for simple objects on either side. So uh, the point basically is that uh, the double cosets appearing on the left-hand side are indexed by dominant co-weights for G, which are the same things as dominant weights for G-check, so highest weights for G-check representations. Um, so in, in quantum Langlands, uh, the object of study isn't D-modules in Bungie, but rather uh, twisted D-modules in Bungie. So to say what the parameters are, um, it, given an invariant bilinear form on the Lie algebra of G, so i.e., say if G is simple, just the scalar multiple of the killing form, you can attach a, a k-linear combination of line bundles on Bungie. Um, and so in particular, you can associate to uh, a form kappa, the category d kappa, kappa twisted d modules on Bungie. And so uh, a basic question that shows up when you consider this is uh, to find a similarly useful deformation of the uh, Satake isomorphism. Uh, and so a basic problem is that you can make sense of what kappa-twisted HECA operators are, i.e. the kappa-twisted spherical HECA category, but somehow there's, there's often too few uh, spherical HECA operators. So for example, uh, for kappa generic, instead of having one, as roughly speaking, linearly independent HECA operator for each dominant co-weight, Instead, you only have one coming from the, the, the co-weight zero. And so the basic idea of gate scoring and Lurie is that uh, while the number of HECA operators drops when you turn on the quantum deformation, what, you, what stays the same in size is the number of Whitaker coefficients you have for an automorphic form. So to state this more precisely, uh, if you pick, uh, well, if you, if you write n for the unipotent radical of a Borel, and you write psi for a Whitaker character of its loop group n of k, 
um, a theorem of Frankel, Gates, Gorey, Valonin roughly says that when there's no kappa twist, the number of Whitaker coefficients is the same as the number of Hecke operators. So, uh, more precisely, there's an equivalence of categories between uh, the spherical Hecke category and uh, Whitaker D modules on the affine Grossmannian G of K mod G of O. And so, Again, roughly speaking, let's just count parameters. So we said before, on the left-hand side, the orbits were indexed by dominant co-weights. On the right-hand side, orbits are indexed by all co-weights, but only the dominant ones support uh, Whitaker sheets. So that's, that's roughly the count of what's going on. So in the classical case, you can pass freely between Whitaker coefficients and Hecke operators, and so the, the proposal they make is uh, to, so to provide a quantum deformation of the sort of the automorphic side of Satake, it's just turn on a kappa twist for uh, Whitaker D modules on the Grassmannian. And the advantage here is that the number of Whitaker D modules doesn't drop. So you, you don't have this, like at least roughly speaking, you still have one for each dominant co-weight at every level. Okay, and so, uh, that was the deformation on the automorphic side. Uh, we need a corresponding deformation on the spectral side. So we need some sort of deformation of representations of G-check. Um, and so maybe the easiest way to say what it should be is instead of representations of G-check, it's you take representations of the quantum group uh, corresponding to G-check. Um, or equivalently, and that's we'll say it in this other language, uh, in terms of the, the kajdan lustig category for G-check. And so to say what root of unity to pick, or equivalently what level to pick for G-check, uh, let's recall, we started with a deformation parameter kappa for G, uh, which was a non-zero uh, invariant bilinear form. Given such a thing, you can canonically attach an invariant non-zero bilinear form for G-check, kappa check. And explicitly all this is, is a uh, these types of things, which again, concretely, for simple groups are just multiples of the killing form, you just restrict them to being inner products on the Cartan subalgebras, and uh, you just ask them to be dual inner products. And so given the deformation parameter kappa, you can produce kappa check, and uh, using kappa check, you can make uh, the katz moody extension of the loop algebra of G check. And you can particular consider its kajdan lustig category of uh, G-check of O integrable modules. Uh, and so then the conjecture of Gates, Gorey, and Lurie is that these two deformations of the Satake category agree. So i.e. for any non-zero kappa, there's an equivalence of triangulated categories between Whitaker D modules on the Grassmannian at level kappa and the kajdan lustig category for G-check at level kappa check. And uh, again, if you just count parameters, on the left-hand side, as we said before, you still have basically uh, one simple object for each dominant co-weight. And on the right-hand side, uh, for the same reason, you know, it's the usual thing of representation of the quantum group. Say the, the, the Lustig quantum group, you have one simple representation for each usual highest weight. And so uh, an important remark is that, in fact, they conjectured more than this equivalence of triangulated categories. So uh, if you recall, K and O were associated to a point X of the curve, and you can imagine producing similar categories for having multiple, for like a subset of points of the curve, and sort of somehow studying what happens when you move the points and collide the points. So it's supposed to mean equivalence of factorization categories. Uh, but already just for a single point, it's, it's, it's a non-trivial conjecture because the, the categories appearing here, say when kappa is rational, equivalently Q would be a root of unity, they're, they're, they're non-trivial, even at the abelian level. Okay, and so gates Corey also conjectured uh, a tamely ramified variant, which concerned the set of arc groups, the Iwahori subgroups, I and I check. So explicitly you just replace G of O and G check of O with I in the previous conjecture. So namely, there's an equivalence of triangulated categories between, instead of kappa twisted Whitaker D modules on the Grassmannian, it's the same types of D modules on the flag variety of G. And uh, similarly, it's 
Now, instead of the Kajdan-Lustig category for G-check, it's category, affine category O for G-check, so namely I-check integrable modules. Um, and if you wish, you can do a similar parameter count for now on both sides, sort of simple objects are parameterized by, instead of dominant co-weights, all co-weights, and equivalently, that's all weights for G-check. Um, so this is an analog of a, uh, a theorem from a few years prior due to Arkhipov and Bezrukovnikov for sort of the twist kappa being zero, which says that uh, there's an equivalence between untwisted Whitaker D modules on the affine flag variety and uh, G-check equivariant coherent sheaves on the Springer resolution. Um, so having stated the conjectures, let me say what we did. So what we showed was under a mild hypothesis on the level kappa, uh, both conjectures are true. And uh, so again, we don't touch the factorization structure discussed in the previous remark. So let me briefly comment on what this mild hypothesis is. It's something of the following form. So it's when you restrict the form to each simple factor of G, uh, if you write it as a scalar multiple of uh, what's called the basic form, then you want it to either be irrational, or if it's rational, there's a condition saying that the denominator of that rational number is co-prime to the bad primes of that simple root system. But I, I encourage you to ignore this, but for example, it's vacuous in type A, and in general, a variant of the argument we give uh, should be able to remove it. And so uh, I should also say that Gatescory and his collaborators have a rich program, which is uh, currently, it's, it's in progress and it's expected to yield uh, the conjectures, but with the factorization uh, structures also considered. Good. Um, so let me say a little bit about the methods we used. So the, the basic idea is uh, we're trying to compare some sort of Whitaker modules and some sort of category O. And uh, the basic observation is that in the finite dimensional case, there's a well-known equivalence, uh, I think due to Milicic Sorgel, uh, Bezrukovnikov, I think Losev, Webster, various people, uh, between uh, if you take a single block of category O for a semi-simple Lie algebra G, that's equivalent to uh, partial Whitaker D modules on the flag manifold of G. So namely, uh, the singularity of the block corresponds to the, degen the, degen the degeneracy of the Whitaker character. And so a, a kind of fun aside or puzzle is uh, when you look at this equivalence and you're used to the normal balance and Bernstein localization in G mod B, it's, it's not what you would get out, which is namely what normal balance and Bernstein localization would tell you is that that category of partial Whitaker D modules is equivalent to uh, partial Whitaker representations of the Lie algebra instead of B integrable representations of the Lie algebra and with trivial central character instead of central character lambda. And so uh, the, the resolution to this puzzle is that this equivalence, it's not coming from localization on G mod B, but instead uh, a localization on this partial Whitaker flag manifold. So namely, uh, a theorem that's going to be it's in forthcoming work with Justin Campbell says that if you instead localize representations of the Lie algebra onto uh, this partial Whitaker flag manifold that gives a fully faithful embedding from all representations of the Lie algebra with generalized central character lambda. Um, but anyways, uh, so in the current situation, the way we go between the Whitaker category for G and the affine category O for G check is we first relate the Whitaker category for G to affine category O for G um, by some sort of affine version of the previous theorems. And we do that using uh, some arguments from categorical representation theory of loop groups. And then once you have this, we cross Langland's duality by matching uh, the combinatorial descriptions of blocks of category O due to Sorgel and Fiebig. Uh, and namely, we compare the descriptions for G check at level kappa check and G at level kappa, and we show they match. Um, so in the remaining time, 
uh, I want to say a little bit about uh, some applications, but maybe first I should stop to see. I think there's are there questions. Oh, 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 oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I guess up to the difference between, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, right, I, so yeah, I learned about the equivalence phrase geometrically from some uh, course notes of Ezra Kovnikov. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, let me say a little bit about uh, what are some expected variants or consequences. So the first is something in the representation theory of chaotic groups. So we're going to pass from the geometric setting in characteristic zero to the function field setting. So we're going to replace k with a finite field, fq. So now o is just uh, sort of Taylor series over k. It's Taylor series over a finite field. And similarly, k is Laurent series over the same finite field. So um, these spaces of uh, Whitaker D modules on the Grassmannian, there's some sort of version of spherical Whitaker functions uh, for uh, principal series representations of piadic groups. So uh, more, more carefully, if you have an unramified principal series representation pi of this piadic group GK, it has a unique up to scalars GFO invariant vector and a unique up to scalars Whitaker co-invariant vector. And so in particular, uh, you have a canonical up the scalars matrix coefficient, which is the spherical Whitaker function f pi, which by its nature is invariant under GFO on one side and Whitaker invariant on the other side. And uh, the previously discussed equivalence of frankel gates gori uh in the function field setting, uh, you can state it as sort of perverse sheaves, well, Whitaker perverse sheaves on the affine Grassmannian are equivalent to representations of the Langlands dual group. And uh, when you take trace of Frobenius uh, or you decategorify, you can uh, obtain from their equivalence a formula for F pi, which, is, uh, which was originally due to Castleman Shalika. And I think that was one of the motivations for their equivalence. And um, so what's the quantum analog? So the analog of turning on kappa uh, is passing to a metaplectic cover of the piatic group, so GK with a tilde. And so again, you can talk about unramified principal series representations of this metaplectic group. And uh, you can again produce spherical Whitaker functions from them. But now you have the interesting phenomenon that while there's still only one GFO invariant vector, you now have an interesting uh, more than one dimensional space of Whitaker co-invariant co-vectors. And so in particular, you get a whole vector space of spherical Whitaker functions attached to a single representation. And uh, so this space of Whitaker functions, its, its study has a long history. It goes back at least to Kubota, Matsumoto, Kajdan Patterson, and more recently, Brubaker, Bump, Chinta, Friedberg, Gunnels, uh, Hofstein, McNamara, Lysenko, and uh, many others. And uh, so we expect that uh, a variant of the proof we gave in characteristic zero should also give a description of the category of Whitaker perverse sheaves now on this metaplectic cover of the Afghan Grassmannian. Uh, and again, sort of relating it to representations of a quantum group at roots of unity. Um, and in particular, again, by sort of taking trace of Frobenius, one should be able to extract uh, sort of a metaplectic version of the castleman shalika formula. So more precisely, uh, one can introduce uh, a canonical basis for this space, v pi, and explicitly uh, calculate what the what those functions, their values on every double cosine. Um, and, and I should say, by the way, so an interesting feature of this is uh, we said before that the size of the spherical Hecke category it can shrink when you turn on a level. And oh, let me see. There's some chats. Ah, okay. Uh, so, uh, and 
the way that this spherical Hecke category shrinks when you turn on the level, it's exactly related to uh, the fact that the space of Whitaker functions is now greater than one dimensional. So, uh, and in particular, sort of the things parametrizing this canonical basis for VPI are, are representations of the small quantum group, um, which again, the small quantum group, well, Its number of its representations is, is again related to the, that exact same phenomenon uh, for the spherical Hecke category. Uh, so uh, the second application I want to discuss is uh, in characteristic zero, and namely uh, to uh, for the algebra G and level kappa, you can attach uh, an affine W algebra W kappa, and uh, so. A, a problem which goes back to Frankel, Katz, Wakimoto, and Arakawa, and others in, in various cases, is to describe, uh, so this W algebra arises from a procedure of some sort of Whitaker semi-infinite cohomology and uh, applied to one specific representation of the affine Lie algebra. And when you feed in other representations of it, uh, you get modules for this W algebra. And uh, Sort of a question which has been around since sort of the inception of the subject is to sort of explain the structure of like how this functor behaves on, uh, say, category O for the affine Lie algebra. And uh, a nice observation, which I think is due to gate score, is that it's helpful to consider not just this one functor, but uh, it fits into a whole family of functors. Uh, which are indexed by Whitaker sheaves on the affine flag manifold. So for one choice of Whitaker sheaf, you get the previous functor on the previous slide, um, which corresponds to you know, some co-standard object in this category, but it's helpful to consider all these other ones at the same time. And uh, once you do this, uh, you can give a very concrete description of what this resulting pairing between Whitaker D modules on the flag manifold and category O for the affine Lie algebra is. Um, and so a way you can think about it is uh, it sort of on each side of the tensor product, you have a one sided anti spherical quotient of the affine Hecke category. And when you tensor them over the affine Hecke category, you get a two sided anti spherical quotient, which is exactly the same as a block of the corresponding W modules. And uh, so in particular, this gives a very, I mean, depends on what, what exactly you want, but it gives a fairly comprehensive answer to how to calculate what Drenfeld Sokolov reduction, what the previous functor does to category O. And uh, an expected application of this is uh, it should imply a recent conjecture of gate score on the compatibility of this above pairing with Feig and Frankel duality for W algebras and the FLE. Um, so that's all I had, and thank you for listening. Oh, um, okay. The question, uh, no, just just the the same the same quantum group, so equal characteristic, and uh, yeah, I, I should. Uh, yeah, I, I should put my slides on my website, but I haven't done that yet, but I'll do that and put a link. Yeah. Um. So uh, you mentioned that there's a different approach to proving this FLE uh, of gates and his collaborators. How does this differ than that approach? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. So uh, in some sense, uh, so, what do we want to say here? So at, at the end of the day, when you like what what's making our the way we basically prove this equivalence is uh, we match actions of affine Hecke categories on each side, and we show that basically you can you can write both sides as a sum of blocks, and you can describe each block in terms of the action of these affine Hecke categories. Um, whereas uh, 
the, the approach of Dennis is, and, and so some of you can see that without doing a lot of extra work, which hopefully can be done, uh, it, it would be hard to use that kind of thing to prove this thing factorizably because, uh, you know, the, the basic problem is that if you take, roughly speaking, like if you take GFO and GFO at two different points and you push the points together, you, you get GFO, basically GFO fuses with itself. Um, but when you take I and I and you fuse them together, uh, sort of the amount of level structure increases. So basically the Iwahori subgroup doesn't factorize, but the loop group does factorize. Um, so uh, what Gatescore does instead is uh, it, uh, he relates uh, both sides to representations of quantum groups. Uh, and sort of he writes, uh, both sides as categories of, well, yeah, in some sense, yeah, it's it's similar to how what we said was, uh, instead of, we said the Kajan Lustig category instead of a quantum group at a root of unity, and essentially uh, he, he relates both to the quantum group and uh, in such a way that the factorization, in, in a way that's compatible with factorization. Um. Can you go back yeah. to the second of your last page? Second to last. The, no. Oh, wait, where am I? Uh, 16, page 16 of 17. Yeah. 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 So, so, so you can also turn this to a pairing between the, like, mm, you should be able to pair like Kach Woody module and Kach Woody module to get W algebra rep, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Right, right, so right. Can you describe that pairing? Yeah. So, uh, so, but, so the pairing you have in mind, it's, it's cat smoothie for G and cat smoothie for G check. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 sorry. So that pairing, what it is, right. Is if you take say cat smoothie for G check and you turn it into Whitaker sheaves for G and then, then it's the, the above. Yes. Pairing. I know. If you turn both to Whitaker, you get a natural pairing. I'm asking, can you describe it no, directly? No, no, no. Oh, sorry, sorry. oh uh, I turn one to Whitaker and one left as cat smoothie, but basically for the same group. And then I do the pairing there. But this is turned to Whitaker. Can you, can you say directly what it is? Oh, um, I did not think about this. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Uh, oh. um, so, so the discussion, I mean, this, the same thing that's up right there. So yeah. does the description that you have, does the description that you obtain, so there's a, I think, theorem maybe of, of Arakawa that for SL2, the reduction functor you talked about maybe one slide before mm -hmm. uh, is T exact. Yes. And, and I think it was a conjecture of him or someone uh, in, in the general case. Do you obtain that conjecture from your description of the functor? <sighs> So, uh, wait, I think the statement, uh, okay, I might be confused about this, but so what that functor looks like to me is it, it, it's like, how to say this? Uh, I might be making a mistake, but I don't, I don't get something which is exact, but it looks, it's very close to exact, which namely it's like, you have a finite dimensional long intertwining operator, and then you have a translation functor. And so, so I have a bunch of non-exactness coming from this finite dimensional long intertwining operator. Uh, but uh, yeah, and and for SL two, it's it should be an issue, right? Yeah. No, I. I might be just doing something stupid, but yeah, I mean, the basic point is like, right. It's the thing which should be T exact is like global sections on the flag manifold, which corresponds to like you, you pair with the Verma M minus two row. Uh, and unless I have this wrong, the point is the Drinfeld Tokolov thing corresponds to pairing with, uh, instead of, instead with the dual Verma module with highest weight zero. And I think that, anyways, yeah, I, I, I could be making a mistake and hopefully I am, but it, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, this is a, you get an answer for what this thing is doing, and I need to compare it with the stuff Arakawa did, and yeah, hopefully figure out if there's any bugs in what I did. But great. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, before people drift away, I, maybe we should thank you one more time, uh, and then we can continue the discussion. Thanks again.